Good morning, everybody. It is good to be with you this morning. I invite you all to stand as you are able so we can begin our services with our opening hymn, number 427. Let us pray. 
Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. Reading from 1 Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights, to Horeb, the Mount of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from Ephesians. Putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouth, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with the seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can we now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes from, to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Please be seated. So most of you know that um, I've just recently come back from vacation. And one of the things I really enjoy about going away on vacation is that I turn off all things outside, everything. I, I'm not normally, I'm not actually on social media on a, uh, ever, 
but I also turn off the radio, I don't read the newspaper, I don't listen to NPR, nothing, nothing. I am out completely. And guess what? Nothing happened because I wasn't in tune and listening to all the news. Whatever happened that I could do nothing about, nothing changed, right? Nothing, nothing. Things moved on. And so I think about this because in the lessons that we have been reading together for the last three uh, Sundays that you've heard, there has been a message from Jesus to all of us about how it is Jesus that feeds us. It is Jesus that sustains us, and it is Jesus who gives us eternal life. Jesus. Not humans, not particular people running for particular offices, not people who have certain titles and privileges. It is Jesus. And so I just thought I would, we would share a moment in time together today to really look at what Jesus is asking of us and what Jesus is promising us if we believe in him, if we trust in him, if we abide in him. That is the message, I think, because every Sunday Jesus got deeper and deeper Jesus said, I will feed you now, when he fed the 5,000. They were hungry today, and so he fed today. Then they follow him, last, last week we saw, we heard, they followed him, and he said, you know that meal you gave us? That was really good, but we're hungry again. Like, we need this on a regular basis. We need to be fed on a regular basis. It says, you know what? I will continue to provide for you, just like I have always provided for you, because God has always provided. And then today Jesus says, I am the bread of life, and I will give you eternal life. If you trust in me, if you believe in me, you won't even die. You know that manna you got from Moses and from God? They still died. I'm giving you something that is going to keep you alive for eternity. So Jesus continues to raise that expectation of how much Jesus will provide for us today, during our lifetime here on earth, and then forever, right? That's some real promise. And so we don't have to get distracted by all the other stuff that's taking our attention. We need to focus on that message, focus on that promise, and then live into that promise with Jesus. And when we do that, when we're able to focus on, the, on trusting in Jesus, then we can start being that community. We can start being those faithful people that St. Paul reminds the Ephesians. In, 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 the, in, the, in the letter to the Ephesians, St. Paul starts telling them about how they should live, right? And I just want to, as I'm reading, I was reading this and I read this, I was like, wow, to live this way, we can't really be distracted by so many things because look at what he says. Put away all falsehoods. Speak the truth to your neighbors. I don't know about you, but when I open up any, you know, my email and all kinds of things, I'm not quite sure how much of that is true. Think about all the things, I'm not on Facebook, but think about the things, the faith pages that you read or the YouTubes, you know. I was listening to a podcast and Brene Brown was talking about how she was struggling because her mother was really ill and so she saw this YouTube video about how if she gave her mother some concoction of berries and this and that and the other, her mother would get better. And then
then she found out the man wasn't even a medical professional. He was a plumber of some kind, but he had this great following of how to give away little concoctions to make people feel better, right? But not truthful and not really helpful, right? Be angry, but do not sin. Do not go down on your anger. How many of us read our emails or the, listen to the news right before we go to bed? Scrolling, right? I'm not sure how that makes you feel. You're naughty. You're shaking your head. You don't do that. Good, good. <laughs> I've heard people, I have friends who do, and they're like, I have nightmares. I'm like, I wonder why. Thieves give up stealing, work honestly. So many scams out there, right? Mother Minervia is traveling. She's lost her password. Please send her money. How many of you have heard that one? Let no evil talk come out of our mouths. Build people up. I think sometimes we get so distracted in what we see and what we hear that we then start repeating some of these things, spewing out some of these negativities when it doesn't hurt helping anybody. It doesn't help us. Put away all bitterness and wrath and anger. Don't slander. Be kind to one another. When we see each other face to face, it's a lot harder, it's a lot harder to write and to say things to people you would say on an email or, leave, or, or on, a, on, a phone, on a post, right? Forgive one another. Forgive one another. How many times have we seen people get defriended, canceled out, Ignored. We're not talking. I'm no longer talking to this person because they're toxic. They're toxic. They're toxic. And so I'm cutting off these pieces of my life and these people in my life because they're toxic. I'm not saying there may not be boundaries we may need to have with family and friends and things like that. But to just sever ourselves constantly from people I'm not sure how good that is for us and for our community. And it's very painful, very, very painful. So one thing I did do while I was away and not listening to the radio is I was having lots of meals with people, having lots of conversations with people, sharing coffee, sharing lots and lots of stories learning about their year, learning about their lives. I hadn't seen them in a year or so. And so just reconnecting, hearing what was going on with them, laughing with them, crying with them, celebrating and grieving with them. I wasn't paying attention to the other side of the world. I was paying attention to what was in front of me to what I could do something about. It made me realize that I can know more about another place way on the other side of the world to the minutia of details because I read the 700 and, or 1,000 word you know, article in the newspaper and I don't know what's going on with Rick across the street from me. Why I haven't seen him drive at 7 o'clock like I normally do. And do I go and knock on their door? Or am I so busy, distracted by things I can do nothing about? And so I think Jesus is reminding us, trust in me, abide in me, don't get distracted. And I'm not saying don't find out about it. I'm not saying don't be informed. What I'm saying is let's not get distracted. What is it that we're able to do and what is it that nothing can change, no matter how much I worry? Now, I'm very, um, I am aware the power of prayer. And so we can always pray. We can hear something, learn about something, pray about it, and then hand it over to God because we can't do anything about it. 
But what is it that we can do? How is it that we can build each other up? How is it that we can love one another and support one another? And let me tell you, when I got back from, uh, from, from my vacation, I got an email. And in that email was a report from the pastoral team about so-and-so and so-and-so and what they've done and how they called and how they connected. I'm like, ah, we can do this. We can do that. We can pay attention to the brothers and sisters among us, to the things that we are able to do, and build each other up. And I say this because between now and the November, it's only going to get more loud. It's going to get louder. And the words that are going to be coming out and the things we're going to be reading are only going to be more alarmists. And we're going to get all, we can get all anxious, depressed, discouraged because of what we see and what we hear. And I invite you to think about the words of Jesus, to remember that Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the provider, the sustainer, the redeemer, the healer. Focus on that and on what we can do together. And I'm, and you know me, you know, you, all of you who've been here with me, you know I'm not apolitical. You know I talk about issues that we think that we could do together. You know that I encourage you to go vote. You know that. So I am not saying don't participate. Absolutely we gotta participate. And as a matter of fact, I was really fortunate. A couple of us joined other congregations and institutions on Saturday, and we walked a neighborhood to encourage people to go vote. And I want to share one story. These two women went and knocked on the door, and this woman opened the door, and she was in her 80s, and she said, they told her that they were not there to sell anything or anything like that. They were there to encourage them to vote. And she said, oh, come on in. Come on in. And they, they come. And she says, you know, for the last four years, I haven't voted. My, my husband has been very ill. Last year, um, I've been really ill, and I haven't been able to get out there, and I wasn't sure how. And I've been thinking, how am I going to participate this year? How am I going to do that? And then I realized I hadn't asked God, and so I prayed. And guess what happened? You came this morning to my door. I said, I'm so excited, right? And so to me, it says, look. We have to participate. We have to be engaged. But let's do it in a way that builds us up. Let's, be, let's do it in a way that trusts in our God and not into any particular person or human because humans make mistakes. Humans disappoint. Humans fail. And no matter who gets elected, whether they're the person that you really cared for or the person you really thought was going to do a crummy job, they will, are human, and we do not put our trust in those humans. We put our trust in Jesus. We put our trust in the one who has always kept his promise. We put the, our faith in the one that will sustain us always. And with that, dwelling in Jesus, being part and listening, listening to Jesus' invitation of how to live, then we can be able to fulfill that promise. So let us eat the bread that Jesus provides so it can nourish us and sustain us so that we may be imitators of God as beloved children who live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a, favorite, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Amen. I invite you all to stand as you're able and let us reaffirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He was suffered under death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, who is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken from the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Eternal God, you have called your people to be an abiding flame of hope in a world that hungers for peace and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord, saying, Come, Holy Spirit. Living God, you sent your Holy Spirit to breathe life into your church. Give us grace to be the messengers of your saving love, so that all may be reconciled in you. We pray to the Lord. May your holy presence empower your people to proclaim your truth. We pray especially for the ministers of this congregation, both lay and clergy, and of the greater church. We pray to the Lord. May your holy presence fill our nation and our elected leaders with compassion and justice. May they exercise their power with wisdom. We pray to the Lord. May your holy presence enable all nations to seek, excuse me, may your holy presence enable all nations seek to serve the common good of all humanity. We pray to the Lord. May your holy presence open our ears to hear and our hearts to understand the needs of our community and our environment. We pray to the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. May your holy presence spread your flame of hope and comfort on those who suffer from any affliction so that they may find conciliation and healing. We pray to the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Risen Lord, we commend those who have died to your eternal care and joy, especially the victims of violence. We pray to the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. become our custom, we want to pray together because we know um, there's lots of prayers, there's lots of prayers that are needed in, this in our community. And so first we start off with Thanksgivings. And I know somebody asked me, when did it rain, Mother Minerva? And I'm like, well, it rained in my area. So for the sprinkles and the rain that it came, wherever it landed, if you got the rain, you know, we want to thank, uh, thank God for the rain that we got in this area. There's also, unfortunately, continues to be lots of strife among nations, and so let us all pray together the prayer for peace in the world in your half sheet or in the BCP in page 816, uh, whichever one you have. Let us pray together. Prayer for peace. Page 816. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth, and establish among them that peace which is the fruit of righteousness, that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. We want to continue to be a place that is welcoming and continues to grow, and so let us pray, say a prayer that was written by the Daughters of the King in your sheet. Lord God, help us to be a welcoming place for visitors and prospective members. 
Help us to grow and serve your people here and in our broader community. Grant us grace to be the church you mean for us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we have a list of folks who have called out and asked for our prayers, for healing and guidance. For Karen, for Frank, for Doug, for Carol, for Maria, for Dora, for Patricia, for Yetta, Emily, Donna, Avedan, Gabriel, Michael, and Petty. Are there any prayers from Sue? Uh, healing for Rosalie, who's suffering from knee pain. Anybody else that we've missed out? For Ellen? We also remember and pray for all our loved ones for whom the daughters of the King are praying. We recognize that some of the prayers that are here are not complete, and so let us pray for prayer for strength and confidence to include all of those who are not named. Your half sheet or your BCP on page 459 together. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants, and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're very excited. There's, a, there's two, there's, there's probably more good news, but these are the ones that I know about. And I mentioned this last, uh, last week. Kylie got her master's degree, so congratulations to her. Yay! Woo! And I would like to share from my neck of the woods, my son uh, completed and was, uh, he uh, completed his commercial license, pilot license, and so he's uh, earned that. I'm very proud of him. We have birthdays, um, Jessica, Shelby, but they're not here, so keep them in their prayers, say a happy birthday for them. Anything else from Zoom? Uh, yes, uh, for Brenda and Diane seeking employment and also for Brenda for safe travels. Safe travels for Glenda, yes. Blessed are you, O Lord, O God, who transforms our lives and makes us new. Hear our prayers which we offer in confidence and breathe upon us your Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, forgive, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. back and to be worshiping with all of you I, i've got to say it it was time to come home <laughs> um, we have such wonderful opportunities for all of us to love and serve our neighbors so two things i want to highlight one is we are continuing to collect school supplies for walnut creek and that's going to go on through september the first and the other thing is today is our last day to donate to the fan drive so if you haven't had the opportunity if you have forgotten, this is, our good, this is a good time to do that. Uh, to, we're collecting uh, financial support, not the actual fans themselves. It's, 
the, the organization can get them a lot cheaper. And so we change from bringing fans to actually doing a donation. So whatever donation you give, they collect all that, and then they're able to um, get enough fans for folks. So those are the, the two opportunities for us to help one another, to help our neighbor. I'm very excited that the school year has started, and so we're gonna have uh, back to school blessings, and that's gonna be uh, next Sunday. So if you are a teacher, if you're a student, if you know teachers or students, please invite them to come and join us next Sunday. They'll be done at every service, so it doesn't matter what service you participate. We'll do the special blessings for our supplies as well as for all the people involved in uh, our education here in our community. And, and going along with that, we are going to be starting our uh, Christ children's Christian information on the 25th. So if you know anybody or would like to invite somebody, there's a sheet outside that you can sign people up so we can know how many, st how many students we can expect uh, on the 25th. And I know Mary's been working closely with that, so if you have any questions, you can talk to Mary. Um, let's see, we got an, a request about how can we have, get to really know what's going on in the, in the vestry and what, how are our finances. So if you're interested in more information other than what you see on the bridge, you can always go to the website. There is a tab there where you can look at the treasurer's comments, financials, as well as the vestry min minutes. So you're welcome to and invited to, to do that. It starts from January of 2024 forward. If you want to know what happened pre previous to that, just reach out to any of the vestry members or Maria Angie and we can get you copies of that information. I want to end um, with this because I think it's really important that we do this regularly and we had not done this. It's been a, I, I've been remiss to do this, which is to really at the beginning of the year to recognize that a different minute, the, and I shouldn't say the year because it's the year is not even, it's not either the liturgical chico year or the the, the calendar year, but we have, kind of have a sense of like a re renewal, right? Everybody kind of gets the, the summers off, we kind of get back into a new rhythm. So around this time, to really think about and recognize and either commission or recommission all the diff different ministry uh, uh, leaders that are participating in our church. So if you are a reader, if you're an usher, if you work with the grounds, if you're part of a ministry, Christian formation, whatnot, I hope you can all be here on September the 1st because we're gonna recognize all the folks who are doing that and, and, and just uh, recognizing them. And it's also gonna be an opportunity for those of you who have been coming to our services and are not, have not, um, have not joined, uh, joined our church. Right, you're like you come and you visit, but you've been coming pretty regularly, and you've been thinking, "Is this my? Are these my people? Do I really want to claim these as my people?" So, if you're, you, the answer is yes. I encourage you to come. We have a beautiful liturgy called the welcoming of people to our service, to our, our to our congregation. There will be a newcomers class, and I was reminded to add, even if you've been around for a while and you want a little refresher, you're always welcome to come to newcomers classes. That's going to happen on the 25th and we'll be ready from the 1st of September to welcome you into our congregation. It's always a really fun time to see who are the new people who've been coming around and who are now claiming to be part of, of our church. Everybody's always welcomed at St. John's. This is a kind of a recognition that you've, uh, you've agreed to become a member of St. John's, and that's really fun. That is what I have for you uh, today, and I'm gonna change the, uh, the letter, the, this opening sentence, to something that um, reminds us, and now we all know where this sentence comes. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
to you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name.
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Thank you. 
living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. And let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.